And good afternoon, Warrior Baseball fans. It is time for the second half of this afternoon's doubleheader. It looks like the teams will line back up and start things over. Boy, hopefully you caught your breath after that thrilling eight-inning, 6-5 walk-off victory. Tyler Epnet with the base hit that scores things. Let's switch over to our public address announcer, and let's get it started in here. Welcome out to beautiful Merrill Blackburn Field here on the historic grounds of England Air Park, where it is time for baseball at the burn. The Grace Christian Warriors would like to thank all of their 2022 sponsors for making this season a success. As a reminder, ladies and gentlemen, the restrooms and the concession stands are located in the press box area. Also a reminder, tobacco and tobacco products are forbidden inside the stadium. At this time, if you would please rise, gentlemen, kindly remove honor America with the playing of our national anthem. Boy, if that doesn't get you ready for baseball, I don't know what will. This is game two of a Saturday doubleheader, end of March here. Tomorrow is Easter Sunday, and uh, hopefully you are enjoying this, uh, this weekend, this resurrection weekend, and we welcome you out to game two here. Chuck, I don't know if, uh, if, if I'm supposed to be up here or not after that thrilling walk-off victory you had over a very powerful Northwood Shreveport team. <coughs> well, so, ladies and gentlemen, I'm, I'm just now, let me clear my throat, that was my best Doug Gann impression of this introduction to this. So, uh, yeah, so I'm gonna try to do my best. I've done what I can as far as uh, bringing it to them out here. <coughs> there we go. But no, no, seriously, Doug, I am so glad you're back. Uh, I, I enjoyed that first game. I think it was more uh, a, a show put on by them for me, uh, just saying, hey, thank you for being out here covering it. Yeah, that was Because uh, <clears throat> it definitely wasn't part of me at all. That was certainly a good one. Let's take a look at the outfield and the defense for your Warriors over in left field. The hero in game one, Talon Epnet, gets the start in left field. Center field, Logan Markle. Right field is Braden Wells. At third base, that is Jack Powell. Shortstop, Maddox Adley. Second base, Cooper Courtright. First base, is Seth Cook had a couple of long balls in that first game, I understand. Yes. And that means the battery for your Warriors tonight behind the dish, Cody Davis. And on the hill, the junior right hander who closed it out, picked up the win in game one, looking to get two wins in one day. That's the junior righty Canyon Wright. Again, Epnet, Markle, Wells, Powell, Adelies, Courtright, Cook. Davis and Wright to get things going for the Warriors. This Delcom team that comes in uh, are looking to to get one of these wins out here today. But Grace looking to sweep the Saturday 
And boy, uh, coming into this one, <coughs> tremendous day for baseball. Off of a week that they lost two to Avoyles Charter on there, came out like they're playing and, and primed up and ready to go after that one this morning. Well, I'll tell you what, Delcom got here early enough to see some free baseball <clears throat> and got to see how these Warriors fight through adversity and uh, still come out on top. Well, there you go. Warriors in their white pinstripe uniforms, white with the green pinstripe, uh, long or short sleeves. So they've got the, the black sleeves underneath those. Canyon Wright set to deliver today's first pitch. Comes at 3.30. That one misses up high. One ball and no strikes. The right delivery. You know, you got to see if he's able to get settled back in to this one. Mm. And he comes in and hits the first batter that he faces. And I was wondering, you get, so I, I liken this to a, a major league game or whatever it is. When you see a pitcher warm up, come out, and then rain comes in the first or second inning, usually he's done. He's not going to yeah. come rewarm and get going. You just wonder where Canyon's going to be. And they were looking at him a lot uh, on his warm-up pitches, but pitch number two hits the batter, and uh, and he is on first. Well, he hit the first batter whenever he came in relief in the first game as well. Saw that, and it forced the run in and <clears throat> tied things up. That one misses high. Appreciate Chuck uh, coming out and doing that one. We were out at the fifth Saturday market this morning for the city of Pineville, which is where I do my, my day job, of course, as you know, and uh, had a great crowd out there. Thousands came out for that one. There's the pitch that is up high, and that is two balls and no strikes. Saw the uh, saw some pictures and some drone footage uh, from the event, Doug. I mean, it looked absolutely but amazing. They won't let me fly the drone. They, uh, they, I, I came mm. out there and I said, look, I've got my license. They said, no, I don't think so, Doug. 2-0 no. no. delivery now. Here comes Wright, the right-hander. Throws this one Whoa. and does get his first strike of the afternoon. A lot of times with Canyon, he's just got to get settled in on there. You get to him. you got to get to him in that first inning. You saw what happened at the end of there. They forced across a run, but then came back that tied things and uh, settled down and went into that eighth inning uh, and, and didn't give anything up. So Canyon now two balls and one strike. Here comes the offering from the righty. That one is ripped down the line and foul over near where those board hog planes yeah. are. Yes. Between, I guess, the road as you come into here, and it's two <coughs> balls and two strikes. And uh, the little roundabout. As much as I, uh, I'll save you folks from it, that does even up the count. <laughs> Right with the you runner at first coming. base, top of the first. You see it on your Wallace I Associates scoreboard down there in the bottom left hand. And that swing on and miss. Strikeout number one for right. Put a K on it, they say, indeed they right did. here. Indeed they did. Runner still at first. You see that on your Wallace I Associates scoreboard. Big shout out to our buddy Nick Magnano, who is taking the weekend off from local baseball and is up in Arkansas Getting watching crackling. the Tigers and uh, and the Razorbacks. Razorbacks have won the first two in that one. Bacon and cracklings are plenty up there. Look, I'm telling you, if you missed out on the Fifth Saturday market uh, today, you need to make sure. They they were doing cooking demonstrations out there today. We had some folks from right there in Pineville doing that and made deviled eggs with bacon on what? top of them. My goodness. Oh, yeah. my. So that was uh, a lot of fun. One ball, no strikes here. Canyon has a strikeout, has a hit batsman over the first two batters. <clears throat> Curveball misses outside, wow. but goodness, Cody's, or uh, yeah, Cody Davis is like, hey, Seth, get back on first base. I'm going to zip this ball if he gets down there. And I think they would have had him right there. Yes, they did, because he slipped on his run back to him a little bit, and I think it had him. Two and nothing, the count. The meat pie was good, too, by the way, Doug. Mexican chicken meat pie. Tasty. Debbie's meat pie was in the house on that one. She She's a focal point of what we do in Pineville and our events there. Olay. Canyon set to deliver the 2-0 offering. That one is lifted up. Seth is under it at first base, drifting back now and makes the catch quickly. Two in a row retired for Canyon following the hit batsman to start things off. And again, we don't have a lineup on here for you, no. so we're unable to, to keep you abreast <laughs> of what's going on there. But this is the cleanup hitter for Delcom. I did give you many props, by the way. I said, uh, if Doug were here, he would know these players, like on the, the Warrior squad. But I was, you know, unfortunately still calling by number. I got you. I feel you. Delcom. 
There's that snap throw we talked about down the first diving back in time. But what that does, you may not get him, but you shorten up that lead oh. just a little bit. Yeah. D-E-L-C-A-M-B-R-E, Delcom, if you are scoring at home. Yeah. And if you don't have it written correctly on your scoreboard. That's right. I don't. Again, I don't know if many people score these games anymore like the good old days. I don't know that they do, to be honest with you. Nothing in one to the Delcom cleanup hitter. Fouls that one back, but uh, not a good hack have. It seemed like he just hit the top of the baseball yeah. and, uh, and, and, and fouled that straight back. It's not one of those that went directly into that, uh, that backstop there, so you know he wasn't dead on it. Mm -hmm. But uh, commanding 0-2 start to this one for right. Canyon credited for the win in game one. Looking to get a daily double here. Delivers this one. Swung through, and that's a much better hack. And you see the difference in that, the way the ball came off there yeah. versus the way the ball came off that other one. That one kind of went straight back into it. That lets you know he's, he's dead on, just missed it a little bit. But the timing is there, so Canyon may want to alter the uh, the way that he goes after this next pitch. 0-2, oh, you can throw just about anything you have in your arsenal. I like that curveball that Canyon throws. He takes yes. a little bit of speed off of it. We'll see if he comes up with it here. Here's the 0-2 delivery, two down, runner off and running. Canyon's going to be called for a balk because he would have had to throw that, and that's just uh, just good base running by 11 there that, that forced that balk. Once you step off, you've got to throw that ball. You can't mm -hmm. turn go the other way. And that was uh, one of the things that happened early on in the other game is we got a balk to tie things up at 1-1 on us. Canyon steps off of it there. So yeah, Brady McDaniel did a tremendous job yeah, on the did. hill today for the Warriors. Yes, he did. Seth hit a uh, single shot, single solo so, shot from solo, Seth. Uh, yeah, in the second, and then come back and uh, we had bases loaded, and got a balk, and then end up working out of that. Believe it at one one in the third. The 0-2 delivery once again following the balk. Right looks in. I still think that off-speed curveball would be a good pitch here. Canyon delivers. Off-speed curveball just misses away. And that's one ball, two strikes. Threw that a little bit out of the zone, perhaps trying to get a little a little chase going on there. But mm -hmm. uh, Delcom were having none of that. The Delcom players have their tradition, I guess, at one ball and two strikes with the hat waving that they're doing. That uh, odd things down. It did not, Chuck. Here's the one-two delivery. Good fastball down the middle, and Cody was mm. looking to throw that one around the horn. It would have needed to just come back to the dugout. Two balls, two strikes, two <coughs> down. Runner at second base. No score, top of the first we play. A little bit of a breezy afternoon here, and we will take that. Clouds starting to roll into this one. It was a sunny day most of the day, but clouds starting to make their way in. Canyon looking inside the 2-2 delivery. Piers back at second base, now delivers. Misses down low, runner off and going. And takes third base, and the runner thought, so that was a full count there. Runner thought about. Hmm. Cody will come out and signal what they're going to do. On this play, and then they tell him, "Do we do we throw through to second base? We watch the runner. They've given up a couple of runs this year on that throw down to second base with the runner at third. You'd like to go ahead and and go for the out, but you got to make sure you get it because that runner will be off and going. Speedy leadoff hitter for Delcom. Send him moved to who was hit by pitch, moved to second on the balk, and now stole third on that ball four. Canyon steps off, tries the old thirty-one." Was in Natchez yesterday, Chuck. Yes, was in Natchez shots yesterday. Some of you up there had the kite festival. <clears throat> kite. Did you fly? Festival. Did you go fly kite? Actually, I'll tell you about that in just a minute. Following this strike one that is in there. So here's the here's the the tragic thing that I saw. A lot of kids were out there, and and the tragic part's not there. Was a lot of moms out there. Were, but did you take their the, kite from them? They were missing. Dads oh. out there. There were there were a number of dads, but there were young young kids out there that mom was out there trying her best with it. There's off and running again. 
that's going to get the runner before he gets in. So the run will not count on there that comes across the score as the out was made prior to that. Let's keep it here, Chuck, and we'll yes. finish that story if you'd like. Uh, so a friend of mine uh, that we, we hung out with up there ran into uh, while we were up there. And so we'd go and saw some of these moms that were doing the best they could. They want to take their kids out there. So we went out and helped them to fly the kite and, and, and let the string out and different things. And it, it, it really turned out to be a great day. So uh, applaud the moms out there that are going out and, and doing, you know, with mm. their kids. You saw a lot, of, but we were able to go in there and step in and help some of these kids and, 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 and help them fly their kites. And at one huh. point there were about 35 kites in the air there on the bluff wow. uh, in Natchez. And so it was, it was great to see. I can neither confirm nor deny that we won't see some sort of a kite event here in Pineville uh, <clears throat> before too long. Just be careful flying drones around kites. Yeah, I can imagine that could that, be a That a could headache. be a, a, a bit of an entanglement. Yeah, and to say the least. Yeah. Yeah, because, uh, I mean, I was hoping you got to fly a kite because, you know, that would satisfy that drone itch that uh -uh. you had. No, I'm still going to I'm still gonna do that. I, uh, we're going to do that. Anyway, Delcom comes into this one, had a good opportunity, caught stealing, being very aggressive on the base, base paths. That's it. You saw the 31 catch, catch Delcom at that point. They are in brown with white pinstripes, it looks like. They're, and their colors are kind of a, a light brown, so yeah. Yeah, I think so. Cody Davis will lead things off for the Warriors, the senior catcher. Stands in, ready to go to work. Like to see the Warriors come out and continue that momentum that they had from that Northwood Shreveport game. Cody goes ahead and he eats Kind of screwballs that one off the end of his bat. It twisted, had some English like a pull cue almost on there as it twisted around. Now batting for the Warriors, number eight, So, um, obviously, in that first game, too, they, uh, like when Seth Cook come in, come up to bat when they were in the eighth inning, they put him on. You know, there, there was a couple of those uh, strategic put-ons during that first game as well. That one taken in there for strike one to B. Wells. Again, no show tomorrow out at Buffalo Wild Wings. Curveball again. That one screwed off of the, the end of it, and it stays foul. Boy, getting a lot of English. The Warriors are hitting the ball off the very end of the bat. Again, no show tomorrow because it is Easter Sunday. And I don't know who I'd get in, my, in the most trouble with in there, these parents. There's, or my wife, your wife. I don't uh, know who we'd get. Uh, there'd be a long line, which there already is, a long line of folks lining up to, <laughs> to get us. That one misses up high. One and ball it, and two strikes to the warrior right field of Braden Wells. And his daddy used to tell me, son, I don't need your help. I can get enough trouble on my own. Now, ain't no doubt about that. Slow curveball set back on and lifted foul over near that uh, dugout area, or correction, that bullpen area for the Warriors where the school bus is parked and a lot of the Warriors players park out there by the tree. So no danger of really hitting anything. We'll do the one, two over again. No check swing. They're going to check him at first. And he did go. Yeah, that was even, even Wellesley knew that he had went on yeah. that one. He started to walk back to the dugout. Didn't hear the strike call. So said, Hey, I might as well stay up here. And if they're not going to check it. I'll take it. Big time Canyon Wright stands in there. He's on the hill today for the Warriors. His normal everyday position is first base. Had three home runs in that game Tuesday uh, a week ago against Monterey. And is set to hit for the first time today. Takes that one up high ball one. How did he do in game one, Chuck? He did pretty good. Um, and I was sitting here just thinking, did he have a home run? Because I was trying to remember how they amassed the. That one is up. That it one's is a home back, run. And it is gone. No home question. run. Kenyon Wright. No question about that one. Oh, no. He got a hold to that one from the start. Hits at Oppo and uh, just big time Kenyon Wright getting it done in the bottom of the first here. I think that's his way of saying, Doug, I'm glad you're back out there. Indeed it is. Well, he didn't want you to let it slip by and and not say, hey, in case you didn't remember, yep. here it is. Yep. Got the youngsters on their way out here to get this one. 
And they'll chase it down. Uh, they might still be rolling. I don't know. It could very well be. They're running right past it, and they're there. They it's like, look, oh. it's like checking out, out an Easter egg. Easter egg. Yeah, that's what you're saying. We're getting in ready for it. stands the Junior Maddox Adelies. Wow. Takes that curveball, and uh, and it just twists inside. Good one there. And he, he tried to jam a fastball by big time, and that didn't work. No. That one smoked right up the middle. Maddox Adelies continues his hot hitting ways. And Seth, who was the, uh, for the Warriors. offensive hero for the for the Warriors in game one, had a couple of home runs he in did. that one. He did indeed. Intentional walk to him in the eighth inning, wasn't it's, it? It was indeed, yes. To get to Epnet, who walked it off. Yeah, imagine that. How about that? Intentional walk off. Crowd <laughs> wanting a bonk and not having it there, but the pitcher is in the windup, and uh, now he, he he settles. Yeah, he steps off there because he because he was in the windup. Now he'll settle into the stretch because that's free reign. If you go in the windup yeah. with somebody, that's that's an automatic takeoff for first. That one smoked up the middle. Oh, it had the had the shortstop moving over to cover the bag on that, and quickly Seth Cook deposits that just in that hole that was vacated now, by Warriors, number 11. 19, Brady, McDaniel. Brady McDaniel threw a splendid, splendid game oh, against did. Northwood Shreveport. Chuck went six and two thirds. Six and two thirds, you're right. Holy cow. And that's just a, a team that was 15 and five coming into the day, I believe. Yeah, I think they're ranked in the top three of their division. Again, that pencil bat that's been used by Adelise. Yeah, Kenyon Wright got a hold of that one. That gives us the 1 0 lead here. Trying to sneak in and perhaps catch Adelie's good curveball in wow. there, McDaniel. There was a few of those that, that were just that slow drop in. And there was several of those thrown in this uh, last, that first game, really. Runners at first and second. It's Adelie's and Cook. That one bounces around. Adelie's thought about going, but not really an opportunity to. He'd have had it perhaps if he'd have been going on the pitch. But. Uh, after it stops, there's really no way to go. He reads it on the base pass as well as anybody else does for the Warriors. He does. Curveball misses high, and it's two balls and a strike. Correction, is it three and three one, and one. Yep. to McDaniel? And that would load him up for Logan Markle, but, but still have some work to do. But it odds it down. It does not. I'm going to mute him. That one is called inside a strike. And it fills the count up. You know I'm doing that because there's a few of the dads back there that have been waiting and dying for me to say that to you. Well, there's only one of them. That's fouled off. A good piece of hitting by McDaniel. And that's going to bring him back over here to second. He was on his on his horses there because he had two strikes, two or full count, and two outs. That's right. I heard you talk about that in the prior game, Chuck. I said, look at here. Yeah, I try to learn a few My young things. Young protege is growing up. They'll take me off and running with the pitch once again. Here's the delivery. McDaniel lifts that one high and foul and out of play over the press box area. Back near those apartments that really don't like you parking in the parking lot. They'll tow no. cars back there quickly and the if you park on that side of it. And, yeah. and we'll do it one more time here. The full count offering for the third time is delivered. Swung on and missed there, and the Warriors strand a couple of them here. But the big-time Canyon Ride home run gets the Warriors on the board. After one completed, it's Grace Christian one. Adelcom, nothing. We'll be back for the top of the second right after.
Little Jay Giles action on the screen there, the freeze frame. How about that? <laughs> so it was a blast from the past. Right, exactly. Uh, and then we're back live. I think it was just a commercial that might have been freezing up on us. Anyway, so, so. we play in the top of the second here. Warriors got out of it after a hit batman, batsman. So this guy that's batting is up again. One to nothing in the top of the second. Nobody on base. A two and one? I believe it is. We'll see here in just a moment. We'll get a good look from behind. But again, you can erase that runner from second base, too. Oh. He's gone. Got to be three and one on here as Canyon Wright delivers this. And for back-to-back -back innings, he has put the leadoff man on base. Just different methods. Different methods. Got a courtesy runner or a pinch runner that will come out there and run. Again, what a beautiful afternoon for baseball. The wind is blowing uh, out to center field area, left, right, center, where we are. I don't think that had any, anything to do with that ball that Canyon hit getting out of here. It was mm -hmm. gone right off the bat. Absolutely. Crush. Uh, right delivers this one. Swung through a good fastball and missed. Yeah, settle in, spend your Saturday afternoon with us. I know a lot of folks are putting stuff on the grill for tomorrow. Or in the smoker, huh? Yeah, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna pull out and smoke something tonight. Put it on around ten o'clock tonight. It ought to be good to go and get out of church tomorrow. Yeah. Look, let this be your your invitation. If you don't have a church home and you're looking for somewhere to go, uh find you find you a church. There's there's a number of them that are within a, a mile or so of you. I've just got about, I've got to believe that. We'd love to have you at One Life Church there on Coliseum Boulevard. And you know, if you don't have a church home, such an important day as a Christian, that ball gets away from Davis and that will send 30 down to second base. So you can't say that you haven't been invited. And I thought you was really gonna extend that invitation even further by saying, look, I'll, throwing something on the pit and it'll be ready at such and such time. Come on by your house to eat. Well, I paid Chuck afternoon. not to think. I paid Chuck to uh, <sighs> Chuck to push those buttons. Look, he's huffing at me now. That isn't that great. Like Pete's Dragon. Huh? Like Pete's Dragon. I don't know what you mean. Huff and puff. I thought you said Peach Dragon. Is that uh, <laughs> no, no. That's no. Southbound Spirit's newest <laughs> concoction? <laughs> The Peach Dragon. No, pretty not. Uh, I don't think so, Doug. No. Here's the 0-1 from right, runner at second base. Well, I guess our is count our was off. count not working no, there. I, no, because the runner had gotten through, so that's what happened. So yeah. runners are at first and second now. That's what I get for looking at the Wallace I Associates scoreboard down there. Trust and Chuck so to keep my man, it right. My man Chuck was rolling when I'm not <laughs> here, and I don't understand. I finally show up, and he doesn't have to do as much of this anymore. Distractions. Distractions. Right. Trying to square in. That hit him it on like the hand. hand. Yeah, Yeah, but I, I got to believe he, a, like he would have, have, have shown a little more um, expression, I've got to think if that ball would hit him. But that's one of those, it sounds like it hits your hand that you've got up on the barrel of the mm -hmm. bat. That's where it looked like it would have hit him if it was gonna, if Delcom, it would have. Delcom certainly trying to push across a run. That's a good butt. Cody's gonna have it coming out of there and he throws that one down to first. I think he might've had an opportunity to go to third as quick as out, but the Warriors do get the out. Trying to look at Delcom just a little bit and try to get a, a backstory on those guys. We'll have to, to find where they are. Delcom again, D-E-L-C-A-M-B-R-E, -E, Delcom. It's not Del Cambrai by any means. No, that's the redneck version of it. Shucking it down to the cob, if they say. You heard that That before? one, I, I, that one called a ball to miss yes. somewhere that I'm not certain. I even marked it a strike because I thought for sure. 
Delcom comes into this seven and twelve wow. on the year. They rank twenty first in select division four. <clears throat> That's Oakdale and and Oak Grove and Mangum and those groups are are in that one. Where was Northwood Shreve? I didn't. I never give him credit as to what they're as to where they're from. Well, not where they're from, but their record and. Mm -hmm. And the ranking they of their were, division. They were 16 and 5. We'll pull them up in just a moment and let you take a look at, at some of them once again. But uh, Cody going out to the mound, make a little visit to, and coach is coming out there so, too. So Delcom down in that uh, Baton Rouge area, they're in that division with a, a, Ascension Episcopal. Uh, Franklin is down there, not to be confused with Franklin Parish. Acadiana Renaissance Charter, Catholic of New Iberia. And Lauroville, uh, the class of that district, uh, and West St. Mary are all in there. So we'll look at some of the games and some of the opponents for Delcom. And that is Franklin and not Franklinton? That's, good. That's correct. Okay. Because there's so many of those names similar like that. You can easily get. Uh... They beat a 9 and 12 Patterson team. Wow. 7 and 12 on the season. They beat Abbeville, who is 2 and 13 on the year. A couple of wins against Crowley. <clears throat> And uh, a win against Glencoe Charter and Westgate. Glencoe Charter yet to win a game. Westgate 2-13. and 13. So the wins for Delcom have come against some opponents that do not have a large number of wins. That's what leads to that lower ranking and lower power rating. Here's a delivery from Canyon. And that one just uh, the bat put out there and pushed, pushed over. Oh, you, you keep going back to that game against Northwood Shreveport. And what a ball game that Ooh, was to was. come out. Just uh, confidence it sets up for you. Yeah. Trying to get a look at, at where they are. Uh, three and one. Northwood Shreveport is Division One select number four team. And they set it 18 and five. Wow. 18 and five. And the Warriors will get a tremendous bump from that. That ball gets away. And now the bases are loaded. And this is the concern that I had with bringing Canyon in, back into this one. You know why you brought him in yeah. in the seventh inning of that one. That's a game you had to, had to, had to win. And you said Northwood Shreve was Division One select. They are Division One select. Not Indeed, they are. Recently beat, or I guess the first of the year, beat Loyola Prep, team that uh, that beat us pretty handily the mm -hmm. other night, beat them 13 to two. Wow. Got a game common opponent wise against Alexandria. They lost to Ash five to three. They've also played Pineville and they beat Pineville seven to one. And this is going back to Northwood Shreveport. So I can't tell you. What a huge, huge game that is um, in their game against um, against Grace earlier. Heck, they beat Natchez Central three to two. Another team that ten run Grace Christian early in the season. That one ground foul. That was just recently too, wasn't it? The Natchez Central game. It was, as a matter of fact, it was well as recent as yesterday. yesterday. Chuck. Yep. Yep. Beat them yesterday three to two. Had won six straight before that loss to Grace Christian. Wow. So big win for Coach Brown and the Warriors. And you know, we talked to him. He said if he could get one of Wow, did he call that a ball? Called that a ball. Oh, baby. Huh. You hear the parents uh, behind there and those hey, play, let's play baseball. Goodness gracious, Canyon delivers that one in there and that is strike three looking thought he should have had it uh just a moment ago two down here in the top of the second inning bases are loaded so we've looked back over that delcom schedule and wanted to do justice to that uh in the work that they had done more when those things get posted up that's going to be a tremendous tremendous bump to grace christian on the side that they need it because they have fallen. Wow, there's a that shot coming out here. It's lifted field. out to center field way back off the wall. Off the wall. They'll play it and get this one in and two runs will come around to score. Not sure why three of them didn't as uh, as or two out should have been going with the pitch. But Grace Christian has dropped to fourth in the 
power rankings with their two losses to Charter last week, but they are just three-tenths of a point behind Family Christian and Family Community. Wow. A lot of baseball left to be played, and that's one of those that you, you know that the Warriors needed this one today. And they need to pick this one up, too. They'll get some points for playing up. But had lost three of four going back to that Loyola prep game. That one lifted high and down the line. Wellesley's going to watch that one go foul. But Delcom has a two-to-one lead in this one. It does. Yeah, they do. And it's kind of uh, kind of strange considering how well Gray started out against Northwood Shreve. Not to... Not to cast any shade or anything, but, I mean, they started out strong with them and, and battled well. And, and this one's starting out just kind of the opposite direction. Baseball is a very fickle, fickle game. Okay, so i got a question Let's now. have it. So, talking about getting called for the balk earlier, and he didn't throw it there, and he couldn't throw it the other way. Okay. okay? So how can they do the three one where he doesn't throw it to three and turns around to one and, and doesn't throw it there either? Because he steps off and I don't believe that he stepped uh -huh. off on that prior one. Uh, okay. He just kind of spun and faked the throw and you can't mm. do that. Mm. Okay. Yeah, it's it's all in the disengagement. I got you. That's what uh, my ex said. Yeah. <laughs> See, uh, I got a good one on him there. I did. Yeah, I'll, I'll take that one. My ex girlfriend, not my. I didn't want to get into that. Yeah. That's you, Chuck. You burying yourself here, buddy. Yeah, I can do that. And it's recorded so I can get replayed over and over again. Over. I don't know who would do that. I wouldn't do that. No, you I would, would not. I would, I would do that. I would certainly do that. I don't think so, Doug. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I get myself That's, in plenty of trouble. Thank you. I don't need thank I don't you. need any help whatsoever. And he's off and running. And that ball is gonna get past. Cody again. Somebody's reviewing tape. That's right. We're looking over things. I wasn't recording it right then. No, no. By no. any means. Runners at second and third following that pass ball. Again, Canyon in a pickle here needs to get out of this one. Two outs on the board. You know, all we need is one and call this one quits on this inning. Time is called by the batter. I got one and two on my count. One ball, two strikes. That one misses low. Two balls and two strikes. Two to one. Delcom leads this in the top of the second. And as you said, I don't believe that Coach Brown's going to be really excited mm -hmm. about trailing in this one. Don't get me wrong. Anytime you come out here, but the emotion of that Northwood Shreveport Falcon game was uh, was intense. It, indeed. And the hat waving over here in the visitor's dugout. That one called strike three. And, uh, and look, I'm going to tell you this, too. I don't I just I don't know about that one. I, I think. Mm. I think that one was kind of low. Needless to say, I'm way back here. That'll wrap it up. But Delkin picks up a couple of runs in the top of the second. They lead it 2-1. to one. We'll be back right after this on 446 Sports. There are some, some things are better left to the professionals. When your vehicle has transmission problems, what will you do? Go where you know. Go where you know. Certified transmission.
And we are back, getting ready for the bottom of the second center fielder for the Warriors. Logan Markle will stand in there. Logan been swinging a pretty hot bat himself lately as the bulk of these Warriors have. It's just been right at a lot of people. Now, the one from Canyon wasn't right at anyone, except us, perhaps. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe that's a... Uh... He just wanted to miss that time to come out and say hi sometimes. There's Logan. It hits that one to the shortstop who gloves it cleanly over to first in time. You know, you, you can tell a well-coached ball club by the way the catcher comes down the field. Did you see when they threw the ball around the horn, they involved the catcher in that one? That's nice. I did not see that, but that's nice. And see him hustle back down there. Walk-off hero from game one, Talon Epnet stands in. Talon had that big two-strike, two-out base hit. Penciled in the victory for uh, the uh, Warriors. Uh, See what he did there. Uh, One ball, no strikes. It's a happy Easter type of a day today. Takes that one in there for strike one. One ball, one strike to the Warrior left fielder. Ebnet has played some center field this year for the Warriors as well. Oh, that's a good curveball. Yeah, you saw that standing in there. And in Talon there. just says, I, I, I don't know about that one. I don't know what I'm supposed to do with it. Did some good work with two strikes in that first game for sure. Yes. And he does over to the shortstop again. Who's got it over to first in time. Quickly two up, two down. Score both of those 6-3 in your book. Now batting for Talks the good about them and they kind of flub the, around Jack the horn shot. Now. I don't drive a, a coach as crazy, Chuck, as anything. Will, when you uh, you go to throw the ball around the horn, yeah, and you you chunk it into the outfield. Yeah. So keep your eye out, baseball fans. June the first, Saturday, June the first, going to have our. I don't know what we're going to call it, but it's uh, a all-star game for seniors in our central Louisiana area. Okay. Kind All like of the parishes that are contiguous to oh. Rapides Parish will get invites, and it'll be seniors only. We'll come out here. We'll play a couple of two seven-inning games. Uh, we'll have – they'll have – their own hats from their schools and pants and things like that. But we'll provide them with a jersey that they're going to have. That one's in there for a strike. So, coaches, get ready. Get your nominations in. We'll have more announcements on that. That is going to be Saturday, June the 1st, right here at Grace Christian. That one is, is yeah. left up high. Now, Doug, and I know what you mean, but uh, you may have to explain <laughs> contiguous to some of the listeners. What are you saying to my, uh, about our listeners? There, I said Chuck? some, some of the listeners. Some of them are it following touches. along. It touches. Okay. There you go. Just like so, the contiguous United States. They are, it's Vernon, it's Grant, it's Allen, it's the Bulls, it's Natchitoches, and LaSalle are the parishes that will make this all-star game up in addition to Rapids. We'll play it right here at Grace Christian as well a couple of treats to look forward to is going to be a home run derby and that will name our home run derby champion we also are going to play a little banana style what? baseball in this we'll pick teams of three that has a pitcher a catcher and a fielder well, i'm gonna split and they'll do one. some three on three and uh, i heard you and i'm continuing to <laughs> ten, continuing on in that one so uh look for those invites to start going out over the next couple of weeks Curveball taken in there for the strike. Back to the top of the Warrior lineup. That is the catcher, Cody Davis. Cody watches that uh, offering come in and out of the strike zone. Don't know if it's going to be the Sinla All-Star Game, mm. what it's going to be called. Cody lifts that one high. Going to be camping out to the right fielder who's under it, and he's got it, and that will do it for the Warriors in the bottom of the second. So after two complete, Delcom holds a two-to-one lead. We'll be back, see what they do in the top of the third. You're watching High School Baseball right here on 446.
And we are back. Merrill Blackburn Stadium. Josh Brown, Merrill Blackburn Field, Josh Brown Stadium, and Twisted Sister playing between innings. How about that? Goodness gracious, that was a song my wife sang to me when we first met. I want to rock and engaged. I got uh, proposed to her right after that. So was she it got a that. Big Diamond? It was. I well, want to rock? Yeah, that's what she, yeah, that's okay. what she got. Awesome. So how about that? Some 19 years later coming up at the end of April? Wow. How about that? Yeah. They said it wouldn't last. Canyon delivers this one. Misses down low. Getting the scoreboard caught up now. I think that's what, 2 0? It is. Top of the third. Canyon stares in. You see the big righty deliver this one in. Fouled back. This Delcom team, let me tell you, is coming into it with the same enthusiasm that Grace had against Northwood. They're looking to come out and knock off a team that statistically they should lose to. Yeah. What bragging rights. Good curveball hits the top half of the zone. A lot of speed on that. That wasn't that just that slow looping curve that he's got. A uh, little bit of bent break to it and a little bit of bend there. Two balls and two strikes now from Canyon. The right-hander stares in and he rocks back and delivers this one. Fouled off and down the line. It's going to be out of play. It'll be a souvenir for somebody. See the Lady Tigers won, and they advanced to the sweet uh, to the final eight, the Elite Eight. I missed that. Nice crash, crash course collision with Iowa, and Caitlin Clark once again. That one oh, misses wow. up high. Three fills it up. Three balls. Three balls. Two strikes. Really would like to see Canyon not put the leadoff runner on. The leadoff batter. Three straight innings, three straight leadoff hitters have reached base for the Warriors. For the uh, yeah, Panthers. For, for the yeah, Against for Delcom. Yeah. Coach so, Brown's not liking it either. No, and that's when you could when you see a a coach walk out there with that sort of pace. He's not coming to make a change. He's coming out there to work on some mechanics and they'll come out to week. When you see them take that slow walk out there, generally they're letting someone get a little more loose, throw the ball, get adjusted, move something over, but Canyon not releasing that baseball. You see it, well, you saw it before the umpire got there. There's the baseball. And he is going to make the change. Wow, that's... Uh, I guess he saw something there that said, hey, you know what? We're done. And I, I'm looking in. Well, I was Oops, looking sorry. in. Yeah, you. Now I'm looking in. Looks like he's going to go to Maddox Adley's is who he'll go. Maddox Adley's will take over on the hill. The runner at first is still Canyon's responsibility. So Canyon has the two runs already credited to him. Again, not our music at all on here. That's baseball music is all that it is. But boy, you see Maddox. Maddox has responded every single time that he's been called on uh, that, that we've seen. That big right leg sweeping around there is kind of, it looks awkward to me, but he's, he's been consistent with it every time. And you'll, you'll, have to look and see what how he gets into his fielding position from there. He also slings that right arm back up, as you'll see. So he is uh, he's feeling it. He's confident, and he's staying. Yeah, it doesn't look so bad whenever we're zoomed out away from it a little bit. Well, when you see that fastball, that was kind of a, a breaking pitch that he threw there, and he didn't have as much of that arm whip. When he throws that fastball, he really lets that arm whip up there. Mm. And the, the, the question that I have is, is he able to get back in to a fielding position? You know, back in the days mm. of the 90s with the Braves pitcher, Smoltz and Glad, uh, Glavin and Maddox, and those guys, they fielded their position so well. And that's a, the sign of a good pitcher is, are you able to get in there and, and control a ground ball that comes up to you? Right, and and you know you're absolutely right, Doug. It, it just it looks awkward to me, but yeah, you're right. It's um, well, and, and the so motor, the the movement, the momentum behind the throw, and, and what's going on. 
Well, and, and what you want to do, especially with somebody like, like Maddox, Maddox is in such a zone. See how he throws that arm back mm -hmm. up as well at the very end of it. It's like the eight-second run. That's the one. Having some problems with there. If you, if you may have seen it, looks like the uh, the sponsorship ads were not running smoothly. So I guess we'll uh, save your stomach from that. I guess if I had to have one thing that ran and one thing that was choppy, there's been games that we've had the game choppy yeah. and the commercials run smoothly. This so I would true. much rather it be this way. And I don't Maybe I should take this time to tell a few jokes. Maybe. Uh, well, Maddox is, is back there ready to go. He's okay. still with his warm-up tosses, or we'd have, we'd have loved loved that opportunity. But, unfortunately, we've got to get back to live action here. Just, just my luck. Always missing the opportunities. Missed it by that much. Beautiful afternoon here as we uh, sail past the 4 o'clock hour. Warriors have been playing baseball since noon. Chuck's been out here probably since about 1030. Just about. Just about. Yeah. The, um, the slight darkening of the sky is not what we would expect at this hour, but. Um, but we're grateful just, for it, I'm telling you. I'm just wondering when they're going to flip them lights, because I, I would imagine since the skies are as covered as they are, unlike this morning, um, I would imagine they'll be kicking those lights before too long. I guess that means I gotta stand back up. Back to action <laughs> we go. Maddox Adelies takes his place, finishes up his warm-up tosses, and that again we remind you the runner that is on first base is not sure. It looked like the screen was frozen, but Coach Brown is just in there. Yeah, he's, he's fixing something, in on on something on Cody. Though. You do hear how the wind is starting to whip. Yeah, I had uh, earlier in the first game, I, I moved my mic from my right side to the left because the wind was coming through from my left to right. And so I moved it to this side so it wouldn't be so uh, disturbing. Maddox misses that one. Maddox misses that one up high. Ball one. Swung on that one and missed. Looking at the scoreboard here, you've got two and one. I think they've got two and one as well. I don't think it adjusted theirs to it. Maddox, good command of that fastball, though. That one ground ball past Cooper Courtright. And a base hit gets the runner at second. And this Delcom Ball Club has come out to play baseball on a Saturday afternoon in March. They have. They, they made that trip up. And, uh, yeah. Looking, Fifth look. Saturday of the month. How convenient. Indeed it is. You didn't happen to uh, ride them around on the choo-choo train, did you? Did see that, yes. They had to have an engineer. And uh, I was I was there. We took the kiddos around. Big thanks. That one's bunted foul. Big thanks to Mayor Gail Wilking and the town of Ball. For letting us use that. You know, Buck Linscombe is the one that made that, Chuck. Oh, that, I did not uh, know that. That train. And when he passed away, they donated to the town of Ball. And uh, oh. we talked to Miss Linscombe, and, and she said that Buck would love for us to be able to use it. And, and it delighted her and her family. And so we were having a oh. good piece of getting out there to hit that bunt. But it does go foul. That's nice to see the com uh, the work relationship between cities and officials. That Absolutely. Way to to help somebody do something a little bit better because you know they're going to need help later on too and did an interview with uh bennett Rowland today of kalb this morning uh, about the event that we were at is here's a delivery that one bounces out of the dirt up into the glove of cody davis and reset things one ball two strikes so and he asked me the question on the interview and then i'm certain he'll use it uh in his spot he says why 
does the city of Pineville do this? Why is, you know, why, he asked me that question. Mm. And uh, that one misses away too. And so the question mm. I asked him is, why wouldn't we? You know, this was about community and it was about getting out and, and doing that. And well, what a better place to do it than the riverfront there in Pineville. Yeah. So, so glad. And we'll let you know about it when the next time it comes around. Two balls, two strikes. Runners at first and second. Delcom. That one lifted way back, way back, and just over the fence. Three run bomb, and Delcom jumps out to a five to one lead in this one. Oh, baby, that one got out of here in a hurry. That one just cleared the, the, the fence, too. Look, it I like. mean, just went over the fence. Would have been out uh, still from a little while, but that's the second. You see the Delcom players excited about that. They are. Hey, dude, now you can go fishing Monday. <laughs> you did hear that. Look, that's that's right. You can go fishing on Monday. Five to one in this one. The Warriors just have have taken a Buster Douglas shot to the chin mm -hmm. in this one, and the, and they are wobbling. Maddox threw that just about as, as hard as he could up and out of the zone, but you hear that fastball pop, but you heard that home run hit. Yeah, there was um, 42 came in for two batters in the first game. Okay. And and then uh, that's when, what you call it? Swung through that one and Kenyon came in after that. He has pumped things up just a little bit has Maddox is yet to retire a man here and throws that one over the head has yet to retire a hitter here in the third and has given up three runs goodness gracious the ball was hit on a rope out of here and I'm telling you Chuck they've just come to play mm -hmm. today they had a nice comfortable bus ride nice looking buses they have a up here, that I, is, I noticed correct. on the side they actually have cameras on the side of the bus mounted forward and backwards. So you can see if people drive by them when the uh, when the stop signs yeah, are out. That's a pretty neat addition to those buses. I like that. It's a new addition. Is that what it is? Uh, huh. Well, it, it looks like a new bus. Swung through that one and missed. Strike two. I've got it at 2-2. Two, two. That's what I have it at. Adley throws that one in there for strike three. First out of the inning. Five to one. Boy, just after you give up only five runs to a team that is 18 and five. Mm. No one coming out from Delcom from that home run ball. We'll go pick it up in between the innings and give it to one of their outfielders here. Hey, I'll let you have this. I'll be back in a little bit. <laughs> I don't think so, Chuck. <laughs> that one misses low, two nothing. The count here. I still can't get over how, I mean, yeah. a frozen rope up over center field and out of the park. Three and oh, right? Yes, it is. Jeepers. Following that strikeout, it's on street, three straight out of the zone. Maddox rocks back, fires this one. Four straight, four pitch walk issued by Adelaide. How how does bringing pitchers back in from like a game earlier today? Okay. How I mean, is it depend on how many pitches they throw? Or? It is. Okay. It is. So you, if you ask, you still have the opportunity to bring a, a Cooper Court right back in. And Brady, of course, is done. That one lifted way back itself, but going to be in the center field. Boy, the wind got that one and knocked it down as the wind has shifted just a bit. Like he hit that one as hard as the last one, but just up into the teeth of the wind this time as the wind seemed to shift and blowing in. Yeah. I mean, just mm. died. Two outs here. That went off of the face mask of Davis. Why and we you? finally see somebody from Delca making their way out here for the home run ball, and we'll direct them over to where it's at. See the hat bobbing over the top of the fence.
Is that one one? Yes. No, two strikes. Okay. Throw over to first, not in time. Young man tracks down the home run ball there. Oh, it was hit out of here on Rocket. And that will do it for the inning. The batter is out, so this doesn't, the, the, the caught stealing doesn't count. It's the out at home, the strikeout there. So credit the strikeout, the runner going okay. to second base. Was off and running with the pitch, but nothing to do with things. What do the Warriors have in them? They're down five to one. When we go to the bottom of the third, we'll be back. You're watching Grace Christian Baseball right here on 446 Sports. And we're back. Braden Wells to lead things off for the Warriors in the bottom half of the second. And there we go. Get settled in. Something wrong with our commercials today as they kind of hang up just a little bit. Uh, the encoding, it says, is overloaded. That one sharply hit out into center field, and that's going to be a leadoff base hit. So the trouble that the Warriors have got into is that they have put the leadoff runner on in all three innings. Big time comes to the plate, has homered once in this one. Very productive at bat, just struggling. And on they're the putting him on. Uh -huh. Big time with the intentional walk with a runner at first and nobody out. Now batting for the Warriors, number one, Maddox. So this is where you talk about protection, and uh, Maddox is going to have to continue hitting the ball the way he does. Runners at the corner, or the first baseman coming in playing the grass. I see that. Expecting the bunt from Adelaide's, but Adelaide's is the hottest hitter on this Warrior team, and they are not, I don't expect, now perhaps they will, but I don't expect Maddox to be bunting. Yeah, I didn't think so, but that one is lifted over to foul territory in first base. And boy, Maddox just upset with himself. If there was a way to break that bat, he would. Yeah. You've seen the way that pencil breaks. That aluminum bat won't do it. No, no. Seth Cook stands in there ready to go. Not without some uh, liquid nitrogen. It's not going to break that way. Seth Cook, runners at first and second. So the gamble to put Canyon on has paid off for one batter here. Seth puts the charge into so it. much. Way back, it is up, it is back, and it is gone. Three run home run for Seth Cook. So the parents back there on that back porch they have over there waving it along, and oh, it's gone. Three home runs on the day for Seth Cook, and he says, well, what, I guess so. Seth making his way around home and uh, gets the congratulations from B. Wells and from Brady McDaniel and also from Canyon Wright. Three run home run makes this thing five to four. Now batting for the Warriors, number 19, Brady. Brady McDaniel stands in there, boy. Do you know anybody having a better day than Seth Cook? But he's got the pencil too. Yeah, Brady has the pencil. Swung through that curveball, and that's the book on that young man. He's going to learn to hit that curveball um, through the years. Just an eighth grader. Watches that one come inside on him. One ball and one strike. He's called that a strike before, though. That was, it was scary. Indeed, he has. 
That curveball is going to uh, wear Brady's backside. It sounded like it. Yeah, okay, it did. Oh, yeah, it got him. Hey, you see. And look, that's so any of those that are wondering and saying, hey, and it, Coach Brown will go to the pinch runner. Again, it should be Jacob Amon, I believe. Grace Christian. And it is. 20 yeah, 23, Logan Jacob Amon. Markle. Logan Markle will stand in there. So it's not a courtesy runner. It's a pinch runner. So entering the game is Jacob Amon. So he won't be able to come back in and run anymore. And you expect that Brady will stay in as the DH right. and, uh, and, and re-enter the game when it's his time. So he comes in in a pinch. Yes. Yeah, right? so, so here's what would happen now. If... Brady's position came around back in this inning, Jacob would actually be in that spot unless he re-entered prior to that, but that would, remove, would would take away any opportunity for him to run. That one is lifted high to second base. Second base drifting back out to short center field and gets that one good range by the lanky second baseman from Delcom. Number five, Talon Epinen. Talon right? I know the... Put a little extra syllable in there. Did. Huh? If they only had somebody that knew these players right. better to do something like that. There's Talon. He also uses the pencil. Good throw over to first, but not in time. Well, that one by Seth that he hit. Canyon has hit a bomb. And the Warriors still trail at five to four here in the bottom of the third. That one in there for a strike. Sounded like a good one. Mm. That's that old trusty number two pencil there. To Talon. Good hit and run. It's gonna cause the second baseman to drift back and he's unable to get it, but Eamon who was off and running on the pitch will coast in to third base. And that's a base hit. Even though it hit his glove, you cannot score that a, an error. That's not a routine play by any means. No. Good shot. Three, Jack Powell. The senior Jack Powell is going to have an opportunity to uh, perhaps tie things back up for the Warriors. They took the, the early 1-0 lead in this one, did Grace? Yeah, they did. But Delcom fights back. Takes the lead, extends the lead. 5-0 up until this point. Well, it was 5-1 because the Warriors well, did take the early lead. Now it's 5-4. Well, I'm saying they, the Warriors went 1-0 and then yeah, Delcom so came five back with straight, five, yeah, five, five straight. straight for, for Delcom before this three-run outburst by the Warriors. That Ooh. one's in there for a strike. Jack took, took that one. And one ball and one strike. Need production out of the nine hole here to get back to the top. And they're trying their best. And that's the old Grace Christian uh, score the run play is what that is. That one bounces around and that's going to get Talon on down to second base. And that's just aggressive aggressive base running going snatching that run they snatched it. yes and that's that's like we're going to challenge you to make a play on this so the idea was that that talon was wanting to get the throw back to second base you draw that throw runner from third is going to make his way down home and and try to get there which is uh, exactly what happens so the warriors execute that little trickeration yeah. to perfection yeah, and, they, and that's a situation where he's got to throw it. He can't turn around and go somewhere else, right? Oh, no, he stepped off. He stepped yeah, off. He, he stepped could do off. that. So it's not a balk on there. No. Don't know what the official could be, what he could be talking to the official about, but it's going to bring in. Maybe we can turn that microphone up, Chuck, and hear a little bit of it. I don't know. He's, he's, that's uh, we're picking it up more from there. He's saying, "Look, my guy balked, so that wouldn't be that wouldn't score the run." Uh, he's trying to. Uh oh. They're going to we're going to talk to Brown, and we'll see if we can follow him with the camera over there. And Coach Brown's going to be beside himself if they change this. 
So they're not making any adjustment on there. That will keep the run. I just we'll have to add, write that down. We'll ask Brown about that one. What was the uh, what was the brouhaha there in the third inning? The brouhaha. That's right. Reminds me of a Christmas song. Does it? It does. There was a an old Christian rap song about Christmas, and it was. They, he, somehow in there, he worked in that, that lyric, brouhaha. All right. Well, you look at the back foot of Jack Powell when you have that camera angle that you've got. When he stands in a box, you can't distinguish between the white of his foot. And, and now he's mm -hmm. moved up in the box because he missed through that curveball. So he stepped up some. Oh. And he fouls that you may want. May, he may take another step forward on this one. Yeah. Getting up in the box just a bit. He had to reach to tip that one. And he does. You see how far he's moved up now. He's uh, almost his front foot is yeah. in the box. And that's tough to change your stance in there, but it's adjusting to the speed of the pitch. Watches that one go up and out of the zone, full count. But two down. Epnet won't be off and running because there's nobody uh, at first. Uh, yep, I got to do my scoreboard. Jack swings through that one, and that will do it for the Warriors, but they pick up four in the bottom of the third to even this thing up. It's five to five after three. We'll be back. You're watching High School Baseball on 446 Sports. And we're back to Merrill Blackburn Field, Josh Brown Stadium here. Brand new baseball game. We go into the top of the fourth. Home run by Seth Cook, and then a little trickeration there by the Warriors to get the run across, and we will see. We'll talk to Coach Brown about that yeah. in the Warrior wrap-up show. We've got a couple, two, two good ball games to talk to him about. I will have to say this. I'm glad it's tied at four, didn't tie up at seven like the last game did and knowing for sure we were going into free ball. That's right. This That's way right. we have a chance to go ahead and take this one out. If the Warriors can just settle down and keep that leadoff runner off base, boy, the, the, the percentages yeah. of a run being scored when the leadoff man reaches versus you not getting him on, it's just it's astronomical what the difference is on there. And the percentages of them putting a leadoff run on now are tremendously low. Huh. Because it's a different pitcher. That's right. Adelie's rares back delivers this 2 2 offering. Fills it up. However, <laughs> you might have jinxed. You might have. Did you announce or jinx him, Chuck? Uh uh. No. Because watch right here. Ball four. And that will get the leadoff runner on base for the. It was a one-two count. Forget what I said. There. And you said that, and he throws three straight out of the zone. Forget, huh. what, forget what I said. Don't bring that up in the roundup show. Somewhere Nick is rolling over in his seat <laughs> at the ballpark. <laughs> oh, you're right. 
You are right. Taking the heat off of him a little bit. Yeah, I'm sure I'll hear about that, too. That one smoked out to left, but Epnet is there to get that one. But that one hit just as hard yes. as any ball today has been hit. But right at Talon. Did not have to take a step too far one way or the other and it was right there well that's the hardest one too one of those that's hit directly at you yeah. an atom ball one down here top of the fourth warriors would certainly take a clean inning <laughs> only one they've had was back in the first but two runs in the second three runs in the third yeah well they've got it five to five the warriors one run in the first nothing in the second four in the third, oh, good, nasty little curveball thrown by Adelise. So what else do we have coming up, Doug? Um, oh. On the foot, and that's got to hurt right down right there. The ankle. Ouch. Oh, Indeed, yeah, he uh, got that one. Well. I mean, next week, we I think it's fairly busy, too. Isn't I don't it? know that I've looked at uh, that far. I know we're, we're thinking about some LCU <laughs> softball, LCU and LSUA Tuesday. with their edition of the Red River Rivalry. Try to get out there and cover that one. That is on the campus of Louisiana Christian University there in yep. downtown Pineville, Louisiana. Right off the expressway. Or right off Main Street, depending on which uh, way you're coming from. You're I guess, though, the the Wildcat Park mm, is mm. right off the expressway. That's fair. Athletics are over there off the expressway. Yes, that one misses high. One ball, no strikes. And, uh, well, Maddox needs to roll him a ground ball here. Going to have to be mm. it in the middle of the field, in the middle of the infield. One misses low. Canyon playing up on the grass. He is trying to cut anything off. Not holding the runner, but playing in very, very shallow. You see him there. Maddox pumps that one in there. Two balls and a strike. Bears back, fires this one, swung through that big fastball of Adelaide's. And boy, when he gets fired up, he is, he's very quiet and soft-spoken on the show, but his his action on the field is, uh, he, he does all his talking right there. Swung through that one, foul ball into the glove of Davis, and that is a strikeout. Wow. But you're right. He's, he's in the groove. You can see he's ready to throw him out there. He, he is, and he plays with as much passion as anybody does. And that's how that Northwood Street pitcher was. Since he got the ball back, it's almost like he was already in his windup. Misses outside. Ball one. Maddox just is becoming a pitcher. Yes, he's pitched before. Yes, he has. But his mindset and his pitching IQ and his gamesmanship has uh, has really, really grown. Mm -hmm. Kind of like uh, response from some of my jokes. Uh, two See? balls, no strikes. That one misses down low. You see different mindset. He's, and he's looking at himself like, what the heck? 3 0 offering from Adelaide's. It's an obligatory strike call. Good looking pitch, though. Yeah, it looks. I've seen some that have been mm -hmm. up there that have not been called. Right. So we'll take that one for sure. High leg kick delivery. Runner from first was off and running. The runner from second was not. <laughs> he was not. That's strange. He's going to pick his pocket and pray. Well, somebody missed a sign right there. Don't know if it was the one at first that ran by it, missing the sign or the one at second that didn't run by missing the sign. Two strikes now. So. Now they'll be off and running. Both runners will be off and going. And he may have been wrong on the count, thought it was full. Yeah. 
Swung on and missed. Strike out, and there is Maddox. Fired up as anybody. Boy, Maddox Adelaide's get Chuck, if you can follow and get a shot of him going in the dugout. He is just, uh, let's keep it right here as our commercials have been giving us chaos anyway. You get a look at the Warriors. They trailed five to one going into the bottom of the third. Three run home run and a stolen run. Tied the thing up five to four. And boy, Maddox Adelaide's just uh, throwing the ball well today. Warriors seeing if they can carry that momentum on. Let's look ahead to what these young Warriors have in store for them next week. We'll try to pull that up just a bit. Normally we would talk about that on the show tomorrow, but there's not going to be a show tomorrow. See how busy you're going to be next week. Right. Or we will be busy again. We will be. That's correct. Wickedy, wickedy, whack. Oh, that's crazy that I knew. Yeah, now I'm showing, I'm showing our age, Chuck. Wow. 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 No, don't have no desire to be jump jumping anything anymore. <laughs> big thanks out to the Grace Christian Warriors that made a, a big shirt order with BU Designs the other day. So, Crash Davis leads things off. He's been, uh, we need Crash to get going on there, definitely. So where's Crash come from? Bull Durham, as a matter of fact. Catcher uh, for Bull Durham gotcha. was uh, Crash Davis. That one pumped in there for a strike. Going back here to check out what the Warriors have coming up. That one misses. And so the second is Tuesday, Chuck? It is Tuesday. And that game is a home game with Rapids. 2-1 is your count. That one misses down low. So we, we talked about having 11 home games left. But the Warriors went through a stretch and ran, ran up a number of those, but uh, they run they run together four in a row with Airline Westgate Simpson and Country Day University Academy. But they load in some big time games coming up here. They've got a couple against Rapids. You got to be careful mm -hmm. with Rapids lurking around, lurking around. And there's a leadoff walk by Davis. And so that LSU A game is when? It is Tuesday. It's the second? Fifth, five o'clock and seven o'clock, doubleheader. Five o'clock and seven o'clock. Goodness gracious. I may fly solo and send you out there. I don't know. We'll have to see about to. to I do some. have some other obligations. Tuesday? Tuesday. I guess we're not sending you out to LCU Tuesday. I mean, I may be back in town. Right. But I, I do have uh, have an 11 o'clock appointment. I thought that was Monday, Chuck. Uh, okay, well then, yeah, never mind. No, but if I'm back in town, no, trust me, no. No, no. I'm going to tell you. I'll, I'm going to tell you. I'll need the distractions. Yep, there you go. Nope, you did say 4-2, so, yeah, dead coming. I thought it was Monday. I'm, I'm looking forward to the distractions. Here's Braden Wells. He's provided a distraction at the plate with a base hit a little <laughs> yes. earlier. Yes. Throw over to first, trying to catch Crash, but uh, he goes crashing back into first. Checking him safely. for checking his deodorant in his arm. The Bull Durham, one of the greatest baseball movies there were. I think more yes. one lines come out of that movie than anything. Braden watches that one down low, and it looks like. Uh, Fatigue may be setting in to the Delcom pitcher. Yeah. I heard uh, Coach Brown throw out a call earlier. It was 4-4-4, and I was like, we need to get him on a 4-4-6 one, and that would be the don't home run shot. Yeah, don't think that we're not going to work on that just a little bit. I'll ask him about that, too. i got to write down these things that I'm going to ask him about. Mm. Uh, so... That one lifted... 
up into the infield. Going to be a catch by the shortstop that drifted in to get that one. So game one, Hero was, was Ebnet on there. The pitching of McDaniel. The home runs by Seth. Seth. Epnet McDaniel Canyon coming back in in game two. What and was going on in the third? And they're putting Canyon on here. They're not going to take another shot of him. No, that's back to back times now with runners at first. They were the runner at first. They have walked Canyon. There you see K Dub over there, and, and why not? He homered his first time up. But I mean, you're going to walk around. Now they're coming up playing tight on Adelaide's, and he's not up there bunting. I've got to tell you that. I don't know. If, if the scouting report is just off on that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know whose cars they checked on this one. There's Adelise who smacks this one, but it's just going to be a high fly ball out to short. Left fielder calls him off, comes in and makes that play and does a tremendous one. And that's going to bring Seth Cook who homered in his last at bat. I mean, he put him on too. Might as well. He's got three on the day. Seth homered. Seth is locked in. You know, you hate to throw that term yep. around. Yep. And they do, they put him on. Number 19. How do you fill up the bases? So you bring. Of course, I could same, ask the same thing. How do you walk the guy when the bases is full too? Right? We've, we've seen that done here, but they are not wanting Canyon and Seth one to out. beat them two down okay. here and they will go to you know this is one of those that you, you come up and you you now hit him so they did not re-enter brady jacob amon will jacob amon will get in there and hit remember he came on to run for brady mcdaniel yes. And uh, we wondered if he would insert him. So effectively, the DH has been killed. Now, at any point, he can re-enter for Jacob. McDaniel can. That one misses. Boy, you'd like to see you walk a, a couple of run, a couple of guys to get somebody on, and you go up there and hit the man and bring a run in. Changing bats out. No, putting a glove of some sort. You get a good look at. The youngster, Jacob Amon. In there for a strike. One ball and one strike. Two down here. Warriors trying desperately not to leave them loaded. That curveball just nasty. Yeah. Well, when he throws it like that, it's it's going to get anyone. Yeah. That one's out to center field. He's camping out under it comfortably, and that will retire the side. And the Warriors do leave them loaded. A couple of intentional walks to Canyon Wright and Seth Cook. A bit of a payoff for the uh, Panthers here. It does. It was a Panther payoff indeed. We move to the top of the fifth. This one is tied at five. We're going to step away just uh, from our audio on there. Uh, we'll be back when the next batter comes.
We move into the top of the fifth. Two into the top of the fifth, tied at five. Five's wild in this one, and a uh, little choppy on our on our screen there. We have to. Don't understand it either. Why it's why it's doing that? Our frame and all of that rate is is very good, but it's it's freezing up on us. Yeah. We'll have a we'll have the recording uploaded for you guys, uh, and I don't think you've missed really any of the action on there. No. Not the important stuff. Right. That one, Mrs. Lowe. Mr. Lowe was happy. Mrs. Lowe. Uh huh. I don't know. Just confused by the choppy. Here's the delivery swung through that one in strike. One, two balls and a strike. No, if lowering that bit rate a bit might, uh, or stopping the replay buffer. Swung through that one, down on strikes. And for the first time this game in the fifth inning, the leadoff runner is retired. And as I asked my kids in school to come in, they said they're tired. I said, are you, this is the first time you've ever been tired? They said, no, I said, so you're retired. Ah, Chuck, I don't know how the students, uh, and they love Chuck over there. That's oh. the, I mean, them students just love Chuck. I think they just love the elderly. See, that one misses up high, one ball, one strike. Fives are wild here. That one also in there for a strike. And Adley's uh, a little more spring in his step. Something about when he walked off that last inning. Yes. He was fired up. Keep a camera on him at the end of this inning. Okay. And watch the the passion and excitement that young man walks off of the field with after big out. Oh, the curveball's just nasty. Put a K on him. Put a K and on indeed, him. he is putting a K on him. Look, I don't know that there's anybody that plays it. So a lot of those won't get this reference. A lot of them will. Well, some will. That one foul back. But he reminds me a lot of Al Raboski, H-R-A-B-O-S-K-Y. Don't know the name. Old pitcher back in the day. Used to just, uh, I mean, he would. He was a very, very animated pitcher on a strikeout. That one lined to Seth. Got to come up throwing off his glove. Not going to get there. Safe. Had to throw off his back foot. Momentum was carrying him towards third base when he had to turn and throw that one. It's just a slow developing shot to get where it needed to be for him to, to get a glove and try to throw it that way, right. too. But anyway, Roboski. Yeah, Al Roboski. Last name started with an H. But was very animated, so I, uh, I encourage you to look that up. Interesting. Google it, if you will. Check out YouTube. While you're there, go over and give us a like and a subscribe. That one fouled back out of play. Nothing in one the count, or one and one, correction, one and one the count. Warriors looking for another clean inning here. That's second, in the, two in the second, three in the third. Got the five runs in there for well, Cody sliding over to go get that one. I think he may have been crossed up on that. Thought the ball was coming in, it went out. That one's in there mm. for a strike and two balls and two strikes. Again, we'll keep a camera on our, our buddy Maddox Adelaide. If he gets this strikeout, I promise you he'll be animated. Yeah. Misses that one inside. 5-5 five, five, top of the fifth. One, two down, runner at first. Off of that base hit a moment ago, off and running, and that pitch is low. And the runner will get down to second base. He was off and running. No credit for a stolen base as he advanced on the base on balls.
been a long day, Chuck. It has been. Peter hurting. Step back, throwing that one away, and oh, surely they oh, did. They did. <laughs> they did. The old razzle dazzle. Coop, Coop's just going to touch him up there, and let's. Uh, <laughs> they, they looked there. I told you about Adelaide's, how he's getting up with the entire club is that way. So you won't get to see as much of it. Uh. They, they tried that in the first game, and the, the guy on second base was just sitting there. <laughs> showing us what I think I wasn't falling for this one. That's great. Uh, <laughs> you know, we saw the Warriors last week do it and threw the ball away, actually, on that when they were there. Oh, no. <laughs> So uh, yeah, we'll beat ourselves. We'll step. Uh, we'll step. Away. We'll be back here for the bottom of the fifth, right after uh, this brief pause. In between innings, the Warriors were pumping it up there. Logan Markle will lead there, trying to get the Warriors back into the lead. They led in the first one to nothing, but it's been, it was five straight from Delcom before Grace got back into the scoring column to even things up at five apiece. That one ground a shortstop. He's been solid today over the first in time, good stretch at first, and the first out is recorded on Markle. Now batting for the Warriors, number five, Talon Epnet. Talon Epnet stands in there and talk about all the fives. So it's five to five in the fifth. Talon is number five. Boy, what an opportunity here for that young man if you uh, play the numbers. And he's swinging a pencil to erase it. Indeed he is. That one misses just off of the plate. This camera right here shows a lot of things, especially when you slow that down. Yes, it does. <laughs> that one in there for the strike. Now, we have the benefit of the replay and all, if you will. Benefit of the recording and all. And all, if you will. Here's a 1-1 one -one offering. Swung on and missed. One ball and two. One ball and two strikes. That one up high, two and two to Epnet. Stayed back on that one again. Third baseman now has this one over to first in time. And the ground balls continue to churn on the Warriors. Jack Powell will step in. You see him come in on your screen. Number three, Jack Powell. So Delcom has has a pretty good strategy. They're Canyon and Seth have both homered. They're not going to let them bat again. Mm -hmm. I've got to believe. Swung through that one as it was Seth and Canyon have done all of the damage in this one. And their pitcher thought he was looking fatigued earlier. He's uh, he's he settled down throwing the ball well. Got him an energy drink, I guess, over there. Perhaps. Looking to make quick work of the Warriors. Here's already nothing and two on Powell. That one misses low and away. One ball, two strikes, two down, bottom of the fifth. We've seen a two out rally already in this game by the Warriors. That went down the line past the third baseman, but foul. Turned on that one pretty well, did Jack? He did. But Powell with the foul, <laughs> and he will stand in there. Sorry. I don't think so, Doug. Pal up on that front line or the inside line closest to what that they call that the river, that area between the plate 
and the batter's box on the inside of it. They call that area the river. I you. Yeah, the official, you call in the river, you call in the black, you call in the plate. What are you doing? You just want to figure it out. The benefit of the, <laughs> the chuckle mic. That one lifted out. It's it, back. It's, out. it's up, and it's off the wall. Caught by the center fielder there wow. who used every bit of the fence. Crashes in to that wooden fence out here and uh, didn't make the same noise as the left fielder running into the fence at Menard on that home run. The, the great Sega call by, yeah. uh, by Nick. That was beautiful. Mm -hmm. Nick did a good job on that Absolutely one. Absolutely he did. He and Danny had a lot of fun with that one and having a lot of fun in this one after five we're tied at five we'll see you back in the sixth right after this And we are back getting ready top of the six. Maddox Adelies is on. Mm. Said that was outside. And it was, but this is out there, ball one. Inside. Two knows the count. That one misses out. So he's working inside, outside, inside, outside. Yet of them, any of them have been able to get the play the, across the plate. Technically outside, inside, outside. And that one four straight. Don't have to put ball four on the scoreboard, Chuck. That one off and running now and just a uh, good shot. Good throw. One of the better ones we've seen from Cody, but just a bit off and uh, don't think they'll play, but we've seen 11. We've seen that lead off uh, lead off hitter for them. Just really excel. Can they get them twice? Nah, I <laughs> I've seen it happen twice I in the game. And there's the visit to the mail. We'll tune in and see what's going on in there. Now we'll have the updated words that they're saying in a video later. Back after that conversation and here runner at second. Delcom trying to get back into the lead. They have been scrapping along with this one. This has been uh, that one just lifted and over the visitors dugout out on that first base side. Wouldn't one game I believe was 
was it five to five in extra innings in that game as well that Grace won six five? Yes. Huh. Don't, don't. I don't know what that has any significance whatsoever in this one. Uh, no. Time is called by Davis and he'll head out there to talk to Maddox just a bit and say, wait a minute, let's make sure we're on the right sign and that uh runner second's not peering in and, and perhaps getting any of the Yeah. Getting anything. That one bounces around that runner. Coach was bringing him, but uh, very good job of he actually made the right decision not to go. He'd have been dead, dead to rights because yeah. that ball just bounced up and Cody had it on the one hop like a scoop and score from a football player. That bounced right mm -hmm. up to him. Mm -hmm. One ball, one strike, nobody down. Runner at second. That's the go ahead and run that's out at second base as we play in the sixth. The little check swing over to Seth. Going to turn and throw and make the play there. And uh, excuse me, sacrifice. It gets the runner over to third with one out, and you'll take that. Yeah, especially if you are the uh, the Panthers. If you're Delcom, that's, uh, boy, you've seen those things just go into disaster before. Runner at third, 90 feet away from uh, putting Delcom in, and that infield will draw in. They're trying to cut this run off at the plate. Adelie's rocks back, delivers this curveball up high out of the zone for ball one. You see very active Wallace Eye Associate scoreboard five to five in the six with the runner on. That one pulled foul. Well, I mean, he got in front yes, of that one just did. as much as you can, I believe. Yeah. It's the top of the fence over here in front of where the fans sit. Uh, just before you even get to the dugout. Before you even get to the dugout. Check swing there. And these uh, Delcom, a lot of check swings there. The last one resulted in a good, pretty good sacrifice out. Uh, what I think it is is he's a structural engineer, and he's just checking the structure's the stability. He's doing that. One ball, two strikes. Maddox Adley is set to deliver this one. Swung through that one and strike number three. Two down here now, top of the sixth. Adelies is an engineer of itself, a uh, pitching engineer. Bottom of the sixth coming up for the Warriors. If they can get out of it here with the lead, you'd like to see them go ahead and pick up a run in the bottom of the sixth and go out there and shut them out in the seventh. Good curveball, but it is pushed over into left field, and that's going to score a run. And Delcom now back in the lead, so that theory is gone. Technically, this Delcom Panther team just fighting and, and scratching and clawing mm -hmm. their way back into the lead here, six to five. They doing. lead this one in the sixth. And so it's paid off by putting Sinking their teeth Canyon and Seth on base. Attention to walks. We'll see how that works out when they come back up in the sixth and seventh. Good curveball there for Maddox. Al Roboski. They call him the Mad Hungarian. Mad Hungarian. Mad. That curveball misses. One ball, one strike. One off the fence now. Cody won't have that one. He'll eat that one. That hit the. That hit the fence or hit the wall back it there. It hit the wall. Yeah, yeah, he missed it so bad it didn't even hit the pad. Yeah. Two down in this one. Two balls and a strike. Two outs. Runner at second. That one misses away. Three balls and a strike. Three one count here. Adelie delivers this one. Ground ball foul, and that'll fill things up. Now, Chuck, <clears throat> I'll get you if, uh, on the strikeout to keep keep a camera. 
<laughs> over there on Maddox. I will do my best. 3-2 offering. Ground ball to, to shortstop Coop. Over to first in time, and you won't get as much enthusiasm as you do out of Adelaide's on the strikeout. But uh, great work. Gives up the run. You see how aggravated he is with himself there. Step away from our audio side of it just briefly on there. Again, this game brought to you by a ton of great sponsors, Vela X and Southern Air and Sadler's Towing and Wallace Eye Associates, Quibitos. Also joining NBU Designs, BK Distributors. Couldn't do it without any of our advertisers like Jason Hawk, Farm Bureau, Kimberly Harrell, Certified Appraiser. We'll be back. For the bottom of the six, Warriors trail it by one. Cody Davis leads things off for the Warriors in the bottom half of the six. Got the top of the lineup up, and that's what you, you want here. The Warriors need to get two runs this inning. Take the lead and go in there and shut them down in the seventh. Go home. That one lifted high and foul and out of play. And so here's what uh, I'm assessing out of Cody, the, the, the work that he does and the power that we haven't seen, at least I haven't seen on here. Those days of working and catching, he's caught a lot of ball games this season. And yeah. just wonder if fatigue in those legs is, is causing some of that drive. We had a little shot on him uh, in between innings. They were just sitting in the, on the bucket and just looked like he was worn out. He's caught both, edge, both ends of this doubleheader today. That yeah. one is in there for a strike. One ball and two strikes it's to long, Davis. It's a long day for these players. I mean, Delcom comes in off of a bus, you know, nice ride in. Um, whereas Warriors have been playing too. Right. And in yeah. the, the middle part of the day, too, that first right. game that started at noon, it was warm out there today. And that takes a toll on you when you got the gear on with you. Yeah. It has been nice and cool. Not like it's a 90 degree day out here, but it's still, it's uh, body heat is radiating out of there. Not being Ground ball relieved. up the middle, and there's Cody getting things started off. And uh, I don't think anybody has a better approach. Than Davis does. He is he is playing so well that you get a good look at Crash over there at first base represents a tying run. B Wells up there and and you're getting to a point if you can get Wells on base runners at first and second. I don't know that you're going to be able to walk Canyon and walk the bases loaded with nobody down. This is an important at bat for Wells to get on base with nobody out. Absolutely, it is. See who they're sending out to the bullpen right now. That is. A strike. Look like 15. That is 15. 15, and I'm going to have to go and resort to my lineup card. Ground ball. Sowed it bobbles it there, and that will get runners at first and second. So now we will see what the Warriors or what Delcom will do. I don't think you throw to him here, and you, but but you load the bases up with nobody out for Adelies, and you're, you're you're putting yourself in trouble. I think they're leaving him. I don't see 15 on the roster, so we'll have they, to. They leave him in at bat. They do big time. We'll stand in there ready to go, and uh, surely, sure. Now they're going. They're calling a balk. 
No, I don't know. They're walking. They intentionally walk him, and he bat flips the intentional walk. Now batting for the Warriors, number one, Maddox. See if Adelies can make them erase that mistake as he stands in the the batter's box here. You walk Canyon, and again, I don't blame you, but how about you, big time Maddox Adelies? There he goes, left that one in there, and that gets it down. One run is in. That will tie things up, and Adelie's look is just fired up, and that's the way you go after it uh, and do this. Ties it up, and there's there's Maddox. Now back to the Warriors, number Bases loaded. There's no way to there's nowhere to put Seth Cook. Now you can't walk him because that would walk the go-ahead run. And yeah, this is true. Seth has three home runs on the day. How about number four? Here's the delivery. That one misses down low, and I think he's still going to try to stay away from. You can't, you can't give in and throw a fastball to him right now. He's been eating, eating fastballs for breakfast. I mean, is it just the hopes that he takes a swing at something? I, I guess that that may be it. That yeah. one misses low as well, and you're pitching around him now. It's 2-0 if you weren't pitching around him, and you're going to go in here and groove one, trying to get a strike. Oh. Goodness, this could uh, this is a big part in the ball game here. Here's the delivery now. That one misses outside, three wow. balls. So it may be unintentionally a base on balls that would uh, Still that biggest. would put the Warriors in the lead, six to six. We play in the sixth. Eugh. That one lifted way back. It is up. Yo. It is back, and it is gone. Grand slam home run for Seth Cook, and how? about that oh baby put a charge in that one salutes that one as it went out of here to the crowd oh goodness gracious any guess who coach brown's gonna bring out here with him um um i guess mr cook wow that my friends is why you've walked him every time until you couldn't. Warriors put up five day. here with uh, nobody out yet. Well, if you weren't cooking for, <laughs> for Easter, you're going to be cooking now, right? You're, yeah, you're, already you're doing it cooking. now. You see the Wallace I Associate scoreboard word. as we get it corrected. It is 10 to 6. I don't know if we have to. Nope, there he goes fixing that one. Yeah. You know me, pushing buttons. Pushing buttons. He'll get that all cleared out. Nobody on base now, and that cleans that off. First one in there for a ball. And goodness, this uh, no outs. This crowd here in shock as uh, as Seth has just pounded the baseball. Nowhere to put him with the bases loaded. You might should have just taken the one run uh, and went ahead and put him on. Uh, Chuck did suggest that. Yeah. Came into this one trailing six to five. Bases were loaded with nobody out, nowhere to put Cook, and they pitched to him 2-0 fastball. He hits deep into the evening. One versus four, I mean. Bullpen very, very active over there. You got a couple of guys getting loose. That one misses down low and uh, that is a walk. And a visit to the mound by the infield and the coach coming out. Yeah, that one from Seth, goodness gracious. Chuck, I don't guess, uh, no, we didn't have the replay buffer on on that one by any means. And that will do it for that young man from Delco. Gave up a monster home run that was a no doubter. You know, essence of like when Canyon is on fire, that kind of just that thorough swing all the way through, a total extension on the bat coming through. Well, wow. we, you know, we talked on the show about Cody and Seth getting hot and turning things around. We talked to Ladner about it. We talked to King. We talked to Brown. He said, when those two guys turn around and get hot, watch out for this team. 
Seth got hot in that game against Northwood Shreveport. 18 win at Northwood Shreveport. Okay. Yeah, Seth just loving life, loving baseball, and, and loving the way this Grace works. And there you got a, a good looking cook in Canyon. Just that smile, a very infectious smile that, that Seth has. Coach Brown having chips over there. I just don't understand. Look at that, that smile that's on Seth. It's just, uh, it tells you everything that you want to know. Four home runs on the day for Cook. None bigger than the grand slam there just a few minutes ago. You see Brady McDaniel laughing it up and enjoying it, the young man. He says, look, one of these days, I'm gonna hit grand slams there too. That's one of the brightest stars in this organization, Brady McDaniel, the eighth grade. And I don't know what that look was. But, that was uh, hilarious. Never know what you get zoomed in on. No, not at all. He said it's four. He just held up fours. That was Jacob, Jacob Amond that was on that received that walk and who is down at first base now, Logan Markle, will stand in there ready to go. And the Warriors have sent seven men to the plate here in the sixth. And boy, we told you we wanted to have a big inning and let them come out and and off and running is Eamon. That's gonna be a good throw. It's got Eamon by three steps Easily. on that one. Wow. Yeah. It's one of the, uh, yeah, I mean, he's diving in and just unable to get anything going. Tremendous throw by the catch. It was off the oh, yeah. line, but it was so far in time. Yeah, shortstop was able to come around and make an adjustment to it. That one hammered into the ground back to the pitcher. So one pitch, two outs, not or two pitches, two outs. One was a caught stealing. And after that Warriors, home run, Talon Epnet stands in there. Still looking over that warrior. That's Cooper Courtright that is still in there getting loose. So you said uh, he came and pitched to a couple of batters. Yeah. And yeah, they pulled him quick. So Adelie's now the pitcher of record for the Warriors. He's set to get the win if the Warriors can hold on. Oh, what a game. I'm going to have to go back in and chop up all of those home runs by Seth. You know what I need Chuck to do is make one of them little, oh, right back wow. to the pitch of the glove save. Wow. And what that will do it. That was a hard hit ball up the middle. What a snaggle. Indeed it was. But the Warriors strike for five, four of them on that big grand slam home run from Seth Cook. And Cooper Courtright will come in, see if he's going back to shortstop. And if that, yeah, Adelaide's is going out there and he gets the, hits the rosin bag, gets the ball. Let's switch that camera around and take a look at Adelaide's getting loose there. there. If you find anybody on this field that is more intimidating and fired up than number one Maddox Adelaide's, I want you to show him to me. All right. They walked Canyon to get to Adelaide's. Adelaide's delivered the base hit and the go-ahead run. Chuck, you got two too many on there. It's 10 to six on the scoreboard. Okay, on my scoreboard, it is 10. Okay. Um, so let me do this real quick. Get a quick refresh on it. And Adelaide is, will stand in there and let's, uh, these Warriors are fired up. Big time late inning heroics by Grace Christian. Braden Wells rushing over to left field to get back and get settled. Ball's going to find him. No, it won't. It's a pop up there. Adelie is calling for it. You really don't like your pitcher to do that, but you're not going to get the ball out of his hands in this one. That dude is fired up. He wants to wrap this up. He does one down, and that's the ball that your shortstop or third baseman is supposed to call the pitcher off. But you got to remember, his daily position is shortstop. This is true. He's just making a shortstop on the mound right now. Seth with two home runs in game one. 
two home runs here in game two, four on the day. And I, I don't know how many RBI he has. I think he's got seven in this game because he had the first home run was a three run home run. Yep. This one was a granny. So that's seven RBI in this game. Don't know what his counts were. Were they both solo shots? Yes. Okay. So seven, eight, nine RBI at least just on the four home runs. Wow. Is that one and one or two and one? Oh, that's one for sure there. It's one ball, two strikes. It ought to be. We'll see. They don't change it. That's a ball and a strike. One ball, one strike, it looks like. We'll go one and two. Adelie's. Misses outside, two balls and one strike. And uh, scoreboard still shows 12, but those of you at home know it's 10, 10 to 6. 2-2. Two, two. two balls, two back. strikes. We were right. It is the top of the seventh. There is no one out and there, or no one on, and there's one out. Over to Powell. He's going to glove that one. He bobbles it around. He's got to throw it, not in time. And that's going to be an E5. Al Raboski, H R A B O S K Y. Look that up. Google that tonight. Not to be and watch some with Al Bundy. And Google some of the the uh, passion uh, out there on the pitcher's mound. That one in there for a strike. Maddox wants the ball back, and he's uh, boy. I don't know if he's more fired up at the pitching or the fact that they walked. Canyon to get to him, and he delivers a uh, the go-ahead single. A shot. Uh -oh. Fouled off the leg. And look, holding the runner at third base to load the bases <laughs> is the only thing that gave Seth the opportunity to hit the ball. If they wave him through and you've got an open base, they walk Cook, and he doesn't get the shot at the granny. Yeah, that's true. Adelies delivers a good curveball in there, down on strikes, and he is fired up. Look, I'm telling you. Pacing that mound. Sure he is. Two down here, top of the seventh. Warriors with an opportunity to wrap this thing up. Oh, oh. Cody was going to first quickly and that might have ended things. Canyon was there waiting on it. See, I can't pull off the unbutton top. I mean, he just looks like he's a, a, a pitcher that's mm -hmm. up there. I, I can't get away with that. Here's the delivery from Maddox. Swung through that one and missed. Ball and a strike. Set to deliver the 1-1 one -one offering. That one misses outside. I take this opportunity to wish all of you a happy Easter yes. tomorrow, Resurrection Day. Uh, death, burial, and resurrection just uh, gives us such hope in life, and that one is strike two. Again, we offered you that, extended that invitation, and look, it doesn't matter where you go. Just get up, go to church tomorrow, get plugged in there, uh, and, and, and celebrate the resurrection. One ball, two strikes. That one just misses down low. Two balls, two strikes. Two outs. Top of the seventh. Deuce is wild. Chuck has the Adelie's cam on and ready to go. That one is lifted into center field. It's going to be played on one hop by Markle, and that'll put runners at first and second. So not out of this one yet. Good job by Logan to come up and field that one. Two down here in the top of the seventh. And this is that leadoff hitter for the the Warrior for the Panthers. Came in. He's actually the he's on the hill now for this Delcom team. Late inning magic in both games for the Warriors. One against in that big victory over the 18 and 6. Northwood Shreveport Falcons. They were number three in select division one. It's a big but, takedown. Fresh off of their win against Natchitoches Central last night. Yes, yes. Big team. One ball, one strike, two down here. 
That goes off the elbow and that loads him up and Coach isn't going to let Maddox go very far, I don't believe, in no. this. But he's going to give opportunity Maddox to finish this one here. I think you may have one or two more batters in you if you're Adelies. He's he's just got to settle in, and I think he's just really excited. He's pumped up. Yeah, he, he is. He's, just, he's uh, he overthrowing just yes. a little bit. Come on, Maddox, let's go in there and let's get this last out. This Rocks back, delivers this one. Twisted foul wow. right off the looked like it went right off the head of the on deck batter. I think I hope it missed him because that one was traveling. Look, that's buddy. one of those where you're shaking just a little bit. Yeah. But Adley's will be back in the windup, and that that allows him to deliver that ball with a little more accuracy, pump, and circumstance, uh -huh. if you will. He'll deliver it with a little extra speed. He'll get that big leg kick and that arm whip. Right down the pipe for strike two. And look, you come back with another fastball like that, and, uh, and and they'll put a K on him. And we'll probably hear him sing that. Adelies stands in there. It's 0-2, two, two down, bases loaded. Rocks back, fires the fastball, swung on and missed, and that is it. And look, I'm telling you, that's that Maddox cam that we talked about. Matthew West. Takes the Warriors out of here with this one. Grace wins every time. What a big performance. There you see Seth Cook at the front of your screen. Four home runs on the day in the doubleheader today. Nine RBI that we count, not, not uh, keeping up with the other two and knowing in that, that first game. I think they unplugged our mic. They did unplug our microphone. That's okay. Our camera's still there because I can't do anything with it because it's attached to the screen. That's right. <laughs> so there you have it. What a great performance. We're going to visit with Coach Brown here in just a moment. I'm going to get over here where I can see him. Mm-hmm. You want me to bring my little box, roll it up close for you to stand on top of it? No, I just want you to mind your business. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Oh, Chuck, and he, look, he's getting a he's getting a ride out here this time because uh, he's got pretty big game in this one today. So yes, we'll is. visit with we'll visit with Coach Brown. He's got a don't know if he's bringing anybody out with him. You ought to bring bring Seth, and he's got somebody on the back. Yep. He's got he's got Cody back there with him. So we'll get to to talk to Cody, and we'll talk about that. He's got a couple of them. he's got his seniors out there. So let's get and visit with them just a little bit and we'll get the camera set on him and there it is victorious coach josh brown and coach we'll go back to the first game a little bit too we'll talk about this one as well but how important was it to come out and win game one in this one against an 18 and 5 northwood shreveport team i tell you what we uh came in today we were going to plan it on pitching by committee the first game and our eighth grader uh I tell you what. Yeah, he spoiled that idea, didn't he? He spoiled that <laughs> idea and uh, kept him in check, kept him off balance, man. An outstanding effort by Brady McDaniel. And six and two-thirds, he was good. He just ran out, ran out of pitches, pitch count. And then we, you know, went to the bullpen, and we thought that Cooper struck out a kid there. And sometimes you're going to get the call. Sometimes you don't. We didn't get it. And then he wound up going extras, uh, bringing Canyon out to finish the game there and uh, had a big hit by Talon Eppinett, man. That was a huge hit. Uh, another another eighth grader right. coming up with a two-strike pitch in the gap. And, man, I, our kids fought, man. And I, you know, we had to almost play a perfect game, and we were close to it right. against Northwood Shreveport. Well, you and I talked a little bit after and on the show uh, last time. After that week, you said, Doug, I think we've switched. I think something we found something in there. And, man, you guys came out and did that today. Yeah, we, we have. I mean, you know, you know, after the tough week against the Charter, these games, all these games are going to pay off for us in the long run. Right. We have we have seen something the last two weeks in this team a little bit different. We, we're finding some passion with, with Maddox. We're, we're finding some. <laughs> you Let me stop right there. I don't think there's anybody playing with more passion than Maddox Adelaide's is I, right I now. I love it, man. He is he is playing with it. He, he's, he's been phenomenal, man. Right. He, he's becoming a leader, too. I mean, I, I told our coaches, that the dude is becoming a leader too there's no doubt it was a great team effort i mean you got cody i don't get many green lights right i gave a 3-0 green light and cody sells one over the center field wall 
three one, and then Seth comes up and hits a a big extra home run that gets us up five to one. And again, McDaniel was lost you. No, you don't hear uh, me. Oh, I got you now. Okay, okay yeah. I lost you. And McDaniel with coming up with again a great outing, and then this game here, um, you know. Canyon walked a little bit to start the game, and then uh, we brought Maddox out of the bullpen, and Maddox looked like the kid that threw against Charter the other night. And, uh, you know, I was really pleased with the effort uh, from him again. And and they pissed around us. How many times did we get walked today in the Northwood Shreveport and the Delcom game and, intentionally walked? And, look, when they did pitch to you, look what happened. So, so we, here's one thing we brought up. If you send the runner from third, that leaves runners at first and second, and they walk Seth, and he ever never has an opportunity to hit the grand slam. Don't know if you had thoughts of sending her, if that was just a great move, say, wait a minute, we want Seth to hit. But uh, leaving the bases loaded, they didn't have anywhere to put Seth. Correct. Uh, you know, we gave another green light to Seth, too, in this game. You know, I've, I, I've only given probably five green lights in my entire career, and right. I gave two, two or three today. Uh, just felt like, man, we were in the zone. We were competing, and, uh, man, I love, love these guys, man. They're – I, I'm, I can't say enough about this team effort right now. We 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 are. I'm really proud to come out here. That was a huge win against Northwood Shreve and and Delcom, a two A ball club who just right. just beat Patterson the other night. So, I mean, I'm proud of these guys, dude. Well, you go back and look at some of the records too. And coach, we'll wrap it up with you here quick because we'll get to the players as well. But a team that came in and beat Natchitoches Central yesterday and and turn around here and and you guys beat them. Boy, that's a that's a great place to be. Well, let me tell you what. There's something special brewing over here yeah. at Grace, man. I'm telling you, we 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 got we got a great baseball program tradition going, and these these seniors right here keeping it going today, man. I can't say enough about these two boys. Just a great job today. Well, let's get over there and we'll talk to both of them. We'll yep, start with Cody you, on there. Thank you, Coach. We'll start with Cody and get him in here and. Crash Davis joins us out here, and, and look, that smile. You was out there having fun today. Oh, yeah. It was a fun day. Tell me about that green light when you got it. How big did Jai's get in that first oh, game? It's like, really? Man. Oh, dude, it was insane. <laughs> that, that was crazy. Yeah, I, I don't know if y'all got it, but um, me got around the first base. Oh, it was, it was it was crazy. Look, that's that's so good to see. Uh, another great performance from your pitchers out there today. Tell me about the work of Brady McDaniel. Oh, my God. Dude, great. Awesome. Yeah, he, he's pitched against a, a – a couple of big schools this year, and he, he today was just unbelievable. Got in the zone and sh throwing strikes. You had throw strikes just test, like you know. Yeah, I mean, unbelievable. And that's that's what you got to do. And then in the second game, Canyon a little bit wild out. Now yeah. I attribute a lot of that to pitchers and the majors in the rain delay. You he warms up yeah, once, yeah, comes out there yeah. and throws, get gets tight again, and has to yeah. warm up again. And that's difficult at any some, level. Some days it happens, or some, I mean, you know. It's different every day. It has, sometimes right. you're on, sometimes you're off. He's on the first game, took a break, and then, you know, sometimes it's just not happening. And that's tough. You never see college pitchers, major league yeah. pitchers, anybody come in and yeah. do that. I don't know if it's a mindset or whatever it is, but that opened the door for <sighs> – Maddox Adelaide's oh, to come in there, yeah. and that dude is yeah. just – I don't know if he was more excited <laughs> when they walked Canyon and he delivers that go-ahead base hit or when he struck – when you got that I, final I, out over here. I think it might have been the final out, honestly. <laughs> he's, he's geeking out right now. <laughs> <laughs> of course he is. Look, we uh, we saw a lot of that. We zoomed in on the, the dugout there. After Seth hits the, the grand slam – uh, I mean, the grin didn't leave his face <laughs> yeah. for a while. You guys were having a good time oh, yeah. out there, and uh, it's great to see where this program is at. So congratulations oh, yeah. on a big day. Thank you. Thank you. There you go. Cody Davis joins us, and now we'll get Seth Cook in here. And uh, Seth will put the headset on. And as always, Seth, uh, congratulations on a huge day for you. Thank you. I believe, Thank what, you. four home runs? And I counted nine RBI on the home runs. I didn't count the ones you had on other at-bats, but uh, – Take me through the way you're seeing the baseball. I don't know. I mean, I'm, <laughs> no, like, right. I really, I'm just, I'm seeing it, and then my hands, like, I, and it's funny, I really don't remember swinging. You right. know, it's just, I see it and trust my hands and go with it. So, so they walked you a couple of times. They walked Canyon a couple of times. Had nowhere to put you on this one. Now, in, in hindsight, perhaps walking a run in might not have been a bad idea because they throw a 2-0 fastball to you that you just hammer over the wall and saw the little salute out to the guys in left field man you're feeling it yes sir so what's funny about that at bat it was 3-0 right whenever i swung and so i looked over at brown when it was 3-0 and so 
he was looking down and he wasn't looking at me. Right. And so he didn't give me the take. Right. I didn't see it. Right. And so then I swung. So as soon as I was rounded, I was wondering if he gave me the take or not. Well, so. and he made that comment. He said he's maybe five, six times in his career has he given a green light on a 3 0. And he does two of them today one to Cody in the first game that he homers on, and one here that he homers, uh, that you homered on. So uh, he did mention that too. And it paid off. Definitely. Definitely. So, look, tell me about the mindset. Charter. Those games are gone. You come out and you beat a Northwood team that had just beaten Natchez Central last night. Man, it's a different mindset. Baseball is a crazy game. <laughs> anybody can beat anybody. It depends on who shows up that day. You know, I mean, uh, it it really just depends on who wants it more at the end of the day. Well, you guys are playing this week uh, like you've got that switch flipped back on there, looking for an exciting run. Big week of baseball ahead of you. You got some other, uh, some more big games coming along the way. So, uh, what do you think that does for you that gets you ready for the playoffs? I think that it prepares you. Right. I think that if you can go out there and you can compete with some of these teams, then you should be able to compete with your own division. Well, and yep, indeed, you do that. Crad uh, congratulations on a on a great day. Thank I you. know that your grandma's going to be happy because we got a lot of smile and FaceTime over there <laughs> in the dugout on you. You know that as well. Y'all go enjoy the rest of the time with your team, and we'll see y'all. Happy Easter to all of you. Absolutely, y'all as well. Thank you. There you go. Cody Davis, Seth Cook joining us on the Warrior Wrap-Up Show. And, uh, guys, as you, you watch you watch them go off of the field here, that's two of the two of the most solid seniors that you'll have. And it's just good seeing the friendship and the camaraderie. And, and look, you, you see it on display right there. What a day for those two. Five home runs between the two of them. And uh, just a tremendous day. Folks, that's going to wrap it up for us here on the Warrior Wrap-Up Show. Again, no show from Buffalo Wild Wings tomorrow as uh, it is Easter Sunday. And, boy, we'd get in all kinds of trouble on that one. Warriors win this one 10 to 5 or 10 to 6. Did push one across uh, at the end of it. 10 to 6, they win this one. That's a tired bunch of Warriors that are out there. Chuck, I appreciate you uh, taking care of business there in game one. You did a wonderful job with it, too. And, uh, and and now much needed time off on there, buddy. We'll see you next week. Thank you for everything that you do. Guys, that's going to wrap it us up from us from Merrill Blackburn Field at Josh Brown Stadium. Happy Resurrection Sunday to all of you. I am Doug Gann. God bless you all, and good night.